for a while. Yeah, I know. It's been, um, life has been kind of crazy. I, uh, I hate that every single time I make a life update video, I end up crying. <sighs> to be honest, I, um, crying for the last 30 minutes trying to figure out what to say because <sighs> I have a lot to say and you go you, you guys know me I'm, I'm very rambly and, and very wordy but uh this is something that I have never talked about publicly before and um I was talking to someone, and uh, they said that they noticed that the best way for me to get out what I'm feeling and try to feel better is by me talking about it, and someone listening. So, here I am, October 8th, 2021, making this video in hopes that someone will listen. <sighs> I, um... I just want to say... I just want to say, hey. I, um... I really missed you guys. More than you guys will ever understand. If I happen to look up, I have my computer hooked up to my TV so I can make sure it's still recording because I don't want to have to keep recording this video. Um, so how you guys been? Halloween's very nearby. I know that's a lot of people's favorite, favorite holiday. Um, I, I don't know what I'm going to dress up as yet. Uh, King and I want to dress up Chloe and Lucifer, at least. So that'll be fun. I, um... I want to talk to you guys about something that I've never talked about publicly before. Something only a few people know. And, uh... It's not something where I'm looking for advice. And it's not something where... It can just be fixed. But... My channel has always been about realism, as you guys know. I, um, I'm very real on this channel. I talk about very real, serious things that happen in my life, that happen to the people around me. And, um, I say um a lot, <laughs> and I make sure that Durza doesn't edit out all of my ums. <sighs> I don't want the entire video to be about me crying and saying a lot of bad stuff. So I promise I'll try to throw in some good things. Um... I wasn't really going to make a 2021 update video yet, but things have changed. And you guys deserve to know what's going on. And I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to edit this video because it'll be too hard. I'm probably not going to let Durza edit it because 
he's been really busy and I think it'd be too hard for him to. So if it ends up being half an hour longer, an hour longer, two hours long, then that's just what's gonna happen. And I'm sorry. Um, I need some tea, hold on. So, you guys remember how um, I had surgery? Yeah, that was back in um, October, maybe? Actually, yeah, hold on, let me look at my calendar real quick. I think it's been a year. Gallbladder surgery 2020. Wow. It's been exactly a year. <sighs> That's crazy. Uh, well. I guess I'll, um, just start at the beginning then. Um. Yeah, I, uh, I had surgery, you guys all know this, and I had to go to a lot of doctors, I'm, I'm looking at my calendar right now so I can remember everything. Oh. My show was amazing, 12 Angry Jurors. It was awesome. It really was. So proud of my kids. I know they're not my kids, but they, they know that I call them my kids. I've got a poster up here somewhere for it. Um, yeah, that happened in December. No, it didn't. Goober. It happened in January. Um, so, after my show, um, I ended up getting COVID. Uh, most of the people in the show actually did. It was kind of stupid, too, because we all wore masks for the show. And we were very careful, so... We're not entirely sure how we got it, but, you know, even masks aren't perfect. I would know that better than anybody, right? But I got COVID, and uh, it, was, it was pretty bad. I, I wouldn't say it was life-threatening, but um, it was pretty scary for a while. The whole thing about not being able to breathe and um, not being able to eat, barely able to get out of bed, very weak all the time. It's it's very real. <sighs> you know, a lot of people. Well, I would say half the people badmouth COVID and say that it's not as serious or this whole mask thing is stupid or whatever, and maybe it is. You know, we all wore masks and we still managed to get it, so maybe. But COVID is very real. And I really hope that it's gone for good. Um, at this point, we do have a vaccine, at least in the U.S. Um, I have not gotten it. But that's a whole different thing. When it first came out, the doctors were telling everybody that if you've ever had a bad reaction with any other kind of vaccine, flu shot, um, I, I'm blanking, but you know, just any kind of other vaccine to not get it until there was more research done. 
and I have had a bad case of, well, I, I, I've had bad instances with every other vaccine I've ever gotten. So I didn't get it for the safety of me and my body. So judge me in the comments all you want, but I did what my doctors, you know, professionals suggested. And they suggested for me not to get it and just to be careful. And I did. Um, well, after I dealt with all the COVID thing, we were getting ready for Heather's. And it was a, um, the show, the show was also phenomenal. It was amazing. I, my kids did so great. I, uh, I'm so proud of them. And of course, this is like months now, but I'm still so proud of them. And there are some days that I can look upon that show and smile and think of the good days. But Heather's was a very eye-opening experience for me, as, long, uh, as well as a lot of stuff in my life. And I'm not going to go into details about it, because what's done is done. And if there's one thing that I've been trying to do this year is to not look into the past. And not even to look into the future, to just focus on the present. So, I will just leave it as I learned a lot about myself, about a lot of things. And that's that. If you're going to start writing a comment about wanting more information or the whole story, you're not going to get it. I'm not the kind of person to talk bad about someone behind their back. Or publicly for that matter. And I'm not going to talk about all the bad experiences in a really good part of my life. So... Your curiosity will just have to be settled with that. During Heather's, though, um, a lot of things in my outside of theater life were happening. I was still going to a lot of doctor's appointments. Still am. And, um, th this will be a, probably a whole segment in the video, but, uh, King has been there through me, with me for every single step of the way. Even through things that had nothing to do with him. And he is literally... He's been my rock. He has been... He's been my chain. That holds me whenever I can't hold myself. A lot of things happened during Heather's, outside of Heather's. <laughs> um, at this point in time, my doctors are still unaware of what's going on with me. I felt like giving up during Heather's, I just, I couldn't 
can handle it. I had to have surgery a second time. People don't generally think that you're going to have two or more surgeries by the time you're 23, but hey. I had my appendix removed this time. Yeah. It didn't solve anything. But I had to be in a wheelchair for a while. I was healing. But I didn't want to miss any rehearsals. That theater. That show meant everything to me. The one thing that was keeping me going those those months. And um, being in a wheelchair wasn't very fun. It it was my. It was like, felt kind of like a punishment, even though it was a reward in a sense, because as long as I was in that wheelchair, I could be there with those kids. As long as I was in that wheelchair, I could help produce a show that I had fallen in love with throughout the process. But at the same time, I didn't feel right being there. Sometimes I didn't even feel like I belonged. I was just there, you know? Maybe you don't, but anyway, Heathers went on flawlessly. I had no worries. And, uh, well, I met someone during Heather's. I'm, I'm honestly afraid to talk too much about him because I don't know if he'll ever watch this video. But we're here for realness, right? But I'm not going to mention his name, of course, or anything. I just, I've noticed lately that little things, and especially big things, can break me. And this person was a big thing. He, he was great. He's, he's an extraordinary person, and I hope that whatever he's doing in his life right now, it's making him the happiest that he's ever been. because he gave me some of my happiest moments that I still hold on to. But it hurts to think about him, you know? He became a best friend so fast. But people always tell me, you know, real best friends, they don't leave. Real best friends don't ditch you, and real best friends don't break your heart. That's what makes me wonder. Was he really 
because if he was, maybe he wouldn't have left. Well, it broke me. <laughs> As if I'm not already broken enough. Losing him destroyed me for a while. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys and say that I'm 100% healed. But I'm not 100% broken about it either. Maybe some things do heal over time. Some things. I wanted to come on here and tell you guys something. Something that I've never talked about on my channel. I've maybe talked about it a couple times on social media, but... Not really a lot on here. Um, I have severe depression and moderate anxiety. I said it. And before you guys click away and be like, oh my gosh, this is just another person talking about depression and anxiety, I want you guys to understand something. That me coming on here and me talking about everything that I have been and everything that I will on this video is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And I've had two surgeries. I've dealt with horrible breakups. I've had really bad abuse in the past. And lots of personal family stuff. Yet this, this right here, t telling you guys everything, it's in the top five, maybe top three. And if you guys care about me, and see me as an important person in your life, the way that some of you claim, you'll keep watching, and you'll listen. Because these words, these words are, they're kind of big. Few people know that I lost someone in my life. I tore apart my freaking room looking for it. Um, but I have this picture of me and her. I couldn't find it anywhere. I almost didn't make the video because I couldn't find it. Um, She was my best friend. She was like a sister. Even though we were cousins, we still called each other sisters. Because I don't have a real blood sister. She... She didn't deserve to go. as many people have told me. She's in a better place. She was 
such an amazing person. <laughs> She was gonna be a vet. She loved animals. She loved them so much. Her goal was that she would never have to put down an animal. She was gonna save them all. Isn't that amazing? amount of tissues. That's great. <sighs> she was 13. She was born with a heart condition. I don't know what it was called, but it was something where the tubes in your heart or whatever they would um close up if your blood pressure got too high and she um she went to go take a hot bath one night and she never came back out I never talk about her. Ever. So many people think that's just a horrible thing. Like, you have to keep her memory alive. But she shouldn't be a memory. And I can't talk about her. Because every time I do, I break and I get so mad. She shouldn't, she shouldn't be gone. She should be right here with me and her mom and her brother. She should be a vet saving all the animals. She should be loving on Chloe and Lucifer as much as I do. <sighs> but I can't talk about her. I just get too mad. Makes me want to punch a wall. Makes me want to scream. I've had so many people try to get me to talk about her. So many people try to convince me that God is taking care of her. That she's happier. She doesn't have to deal with bullies. She doesn't have to deal with any problems. <laughs> but I can't. I can't think that way. I just can't. It's too hard. She would be an adult by now. She would. She never even got to experience high school. She loved school. She loved learning. God, she was amazing.
Heaven is so lucky to have her. say I want you guys to know that I have had depression for a long time I have and I went to therapists I, I did go looking for help I tried but it didn't work I think it's 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 uh it's come in waves. And and right now it's just it's it's, it's more severe than it, than it was a month ago or two. I think that my health is a big part of it dragging me down. Because back when I first caught it, you know, when she passed away, I felt like I lost everything. I felt like I lost my best friend. And then I, I felt like I did lose my friends in school. No one ever talked to me. Either because maybe they just didn't know what to say. Or maybe they thought I would just want to be left alone. The truth is I was screaming from the inside for help. I was screaming for someone to hug me. To listen to me. To bring her back. Even though I know they couldn't. I lost a lot of people I care about. You know, it kind of makes it hard to want to care anymore. have passed away, but none of her more than her. I've lost a lot of friends. Maybe because we had a fight over something stupid and just haven't recovered. Maybe I was just too much for them. Too much drama, too many problems couldn't handle it. Maybe because I've shut them out because I don't know what to do anymore. I can probably count the people in my life that I still consider true friends that I still talk to to this day on one hand and one of them told me last night that why face your problems by yourself when you can face them with someone else I've never been told anything like that maybe that's what inspired this video 
So if you watch this video, you'll know you're the one that said it. Thank you. That, that meant more to me than you know. A lot has happened this year. My health problems started getting worse. I did not think that could happen, but I was wrong. I wasn't just having stomach problems anymore. I started having, um, chest problems, possibly heart problems. It's kind of scary when you think about it, right? There could be something seriously wrong with me and I just don't know it. So I, um, I, I, um, I have to wear this. I'm trying to show you. It's in this little pouch. It's a heart monitor. I'm wearing it for two weeks so they can study it. And my doctor told me that not only do I have severe depression, which I knew that, I also have moderate anxiety. At first, I thought that was so silly. It's like, anxiety, me? No way. I don't get nervous about stupid things like that. Like, you know, just any, just any old thing. Like, it would have to be something really big for me to get nervous about. And then I did some research. Pushed my ego aside, I guess. My pride. did some research about what anxiety really is, what it can do to you, the lines started to line up, started to match up. I didn't think I would be a person with anxiety. I mean, I guess I could say the same for depression, but I don't think my depression ever really went away. I think it just, uh, like I said, it comes in waves. But anxiety just didn't make sense. It's dumb because, I mean, I'm not one for labels, not really. They're not so important to me. Not saying that if they're important to you, that's a bad thing. It's just, it's a thing for me. Like, I just, I don't really care. But, this anxiety thing, it's a whole new beast, you know? Like, uh... Depression. I know a bit on how to handle that. I, I watch movies. I record YouTube videos. I play games. I listen to music. I I make it so loud on the outside world, so that way nothing on the inside world can consume me. I keep it so busy in my life. So that way, nothing has time to get in and take up more of my time and space and energy. But anxiety? I don't know how to handle that. When my doctor told me that, I just, I was in shock. But, uh, I started noticing it about a week ago started picking up little pieces. Like, why does my chest hurt right before I have to go to work if I like my job? Why am I so scared to 
to walk out of the house unless I'm dressed appropriately or, or the way that I, I want to be perceived. Why do I not text someone? Because I'm afraid that they might not text me back. Or why does it terrify me when I do that? Or don't do that? I'm afraid they won't text me back. Or they won't be my friend anymore. Or that they'll be too busy for me. I have to learn how to deal with it. And I am planning on finding help. So this isn't a call for help video. I am planning on finding my own help. My doctors are helping me. It's just weird, you know? Like depression just seems like an everyday thing for me, but this anxiety, I just... Use a weird taste in the mouth. It's like eating a bad apple and you're afraid to eat another apple because you don't want it to be bad. I don't know how to deal with that. And the chest pains are the worst. They really are. I could be doing nothing just laying here and it'll just happen sometimes they're really bad sometimes I can't breathe I don't know why I won't be thinking of anything not consciously maybe subconsciously I won't be doing anything that will trigger it it'll just happen Then I started realizing my anxiety and the depression started kind of going hand in hand. Whenever my stomach hurt, my chest hurt. Whenever my chest hurts, my stomach hurts. It's like they work against each other, but also sometimes they work together. Kind of like siblings, I guess. Like sometimes I'll just be so sad and then the anxiety will come out and be like, oh my gosh, what if someone comes in here and sees me crying? Like what was happening just a minute ago when I was hearing my mom walk into, up and down the hall. Or I'll be so stressed and not want to go to work. And then I'll freak out because I need the money to pay my bills. And I have to go to work. Or the opposite. I'll be so excited to go to work. So I love my job. I really do. Delivery driving is, is really awesome. I love it. And then I'll get upset. Because I'll feel like work is taking over my life. And all I ever do is work. And I'm not here for my kittens. Or my family. Or King. It's so much negative. I'm such a positive person. At least I try to be. But these two things, they just, they really screw with you. People just don't get it. And it's not like a thing, like, you know, uh, like stereotypical teenagers say, or like, you just don't understand me. Like some people literally don't get it. And it's not their fault they haven't done the research, or they've never experienced it themselves. Like somebody's... Somebody who's dealing with this, somebody's best day ever, could just seem like someone's good day, or normal day. It's different for everybody. Like, you can... You can try to research depression and anxiety, but you're going to get so many different stories. It's so different for everybody. It really is. I guess 
An example would be like, what would be a good day for me? Good day. I guess a really good day for me would be waking up at a good time. I'm not saying like crack of dawn, but you know, not sleeping until noon like I kind of did today. Going to sleep at a good time the night before. Waking up and feeding my little babies, making sure they have clean water and a litter box, giving them the love and care and attention they deserve, maybe making up my bed, changing into something that's not pajamas, eating a good breakfast, that's a big one. God, if there's one problem that I am struggling with, the worst, or one of the worst, is eating. I never want to eat. And can anyone blame me? Everything I eat makes me sick. There was one restaurant that I usually am able to eat at, but it's more on the pricey side, and it's kind of far. No, nothing, It can't deliver to me. It's so stressful knowing that everything you put in your mouth may not settle, may ruin you for the day, depending on how bad. It's so exhausting going through so many restaurants and types of food, having to make a list of things that settled throughout the day. It's not a very big list either. Maybe it's one thing, maybe it's two. You're lucky if it's three. Eating a good lunch, that would be nice. It's kind of a toss up lately. Either I eat a really good breakfast or I don't eat lunch. Or I eat no breakfast and a really good lunch. My condition of hypoglycemia requires me to eat every two to three hours a good sized snack or a small meal at least every two to three hours. And I just told you that sometimes I don't even eat the most important meal of the day. Taking good care of myself. I think King does more of that for me than I do for myself. helps me get out of bed, helps me pick out what to wear, I could have four stacks, well actually I do, I have like four stacks of clothes right next to me, and it took me forever just to pick out this, for this video, because I was about to record in my pajamas, I did not care, that's another thing, not caring, it sucks. I am such a caring person, maybe even too much, but when you literally wake up and don't care enough to even get up out of bed to do anything, make you some food, there was one day recently where I, I was so upset because I was telling, talking to King about it, my room was a disaster. I don't know how it happened, but it was so, like, I couldn't even see my floor. My bed was covered in stuff, like I had just a little bit of space to sleep, pretty much. I spent the entire day telling myself, get up, clean, clean your room. It won't take that long. Throw your dirty clothes in the hamper, put your clean clothes away, and get rid of the trash. That's it. That's all you have to do. Really, it's not a lot. I didn't clean my room that day until like 1 a.m. Because I couldn't sleep. Because I couldn't keep thinking about how messed up my room was. And it sucks. It really does. 
It also sucks whenever people make these videos and then there are those ignorant people who act like that's not a big deal. To some people it is. I'd like to think of myself as a clean person, but sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to get up out of bed and make you food. Something you need to survive. Just gets pushed on the back burner. It's not important. Like getting out of bed and getting dressed, not important. There was another day when I literally spent like two hours in bed after waking up listening to my cats crying because they were hungry they hadn't eaten since the night before obviously i was asleep just looking at me waiting for me to get up and feed them and i couldn't for two hours you know what i spent that day doing after that after i finally did get up and feed them i beat myself up I wouldn't talk to anybody. I was so mad at myself. It's like, how could you do that? Your kittens were starving. Your kids were starving. And you couldn't be bothered to get up and feed them. I'm so hard on myself now. Now that I have these stupid labels, I'm so much harder on myself. I don't know how to deal with it. King tries to help. He really does. And sometimes he does. I guess another thing about a good day would be me getting to see him. Maybe he's off work, maybe I'm off work. We go do something fun. Go to the mall, go look at stuff. Maybe go buy a new game. We try it out together. Maybe stream together. Record a video. or something. Just do something fun outside. Away from this house. Away from his, like, his house. Away from my house. Eat a dinner and be able to go to bed without being in pain. That would be amazing. I can't remember the last time that I had a real dinner. I'll come home from work. I won't be hungry. Probably wouldn't have eaten at work either. Maybe a snack. Come home and I just go to bed. Or I'm up for hours because I can't sleep and I'll usually eat chocolate. Drink lots of sweet tea. Depression and anxiety is not always being sad and being afraid. There's so much more to it. People just don't. They just don't know. I wish that I could come here and tell you next time that everything's good again. I'm happy. I've got a great life. Everything's going right for me. But it's still going to take a lot of time. I guess another thing that's really hard is I've lost interest in doing things that I usually love. I begged my brother to buy me a box of 100 markers. I love markers. And then I bought myself a Frozen 2 like, big coloring book thing. It's not even opened. markers. It's been weeks now. I 
it's hard for me to get up and want to do my diamond art. If you guys have been following my Instagram, you know I've been doing that. I bought a couple new games recently. I've maybe played them once. I haven't streamed in a while. I haven't felt like it. It's so hard. You know, my my good my good friends on Discord are, you know, they're always watching out for me. They're always checking in on me and I appreciate it. Just never feel like doing the things that I love anymore. It's like my job. I truly love my job. I never want to go to work. I don't know why. It's anytime I think about it, I just I get so sick to my stomach. My chest feels heavy. It's like why would you not want to go somewhere that you love? You know? Why would you not want to do something that makes you happy? Coloring makes me happy. Watching Disney movies, doing kid things, you know. People can go on and on and speculate what all that means, but it's what makes me happy. And I don't have to explain myself to you. The people who are like that. You know, I don't have to put a, a label on it or say that it's little space or say that it's childish or you know whatever I don't have to do that I just know that it makes me happy and it gives me a break from the everyday struggles that I have to live with and that's that I've been recording for almost an hour I feel like at this point I'm just gonna start rambling I really don't know what else to say at this point. I can't tell you how I got anxiety. I, I don't know. I'm hoping someone can answer that for me. My mom started watching this channel. I'll leave the link in the description below if I can find it, if I remember, but... Um, I know the guy's name is Steven, I don't remember what the girl's name is, I'm sorry, but uh, she started watching them and she absolutely adores them. If you guys ever watch this, she's like your biggest fan now. She watched like a lot of your videos in a week. Been just watched you guys, she she loves you. But uh, show me this video of, of the guy, Steven, who was going through similar things as me with his stomach, he was never able to eat, he was always sick. Any big thing always set him off the edge, health-wise. And then he found out that it was caused by his uh, depression and anxiety. And he started taking some, some certain pills, don't remember what they're called, but certain pills that uh, started making him feel better. And after spending four years, at least, going to doctors, trying to figure out what's going on with me, I mean, a lot of the things that he said matched up with mine, certain instances, certain feelings, sickness, health, uh, just other health issues, it just... It all lined up pretty, pretty similar. And I had to do my own research, but I mean, you can call the horse a cat, but it won't make the horse a cat. Like I can call this stomach disease, you know, whatever I want. It doesn't make it true. I don't think I'm saying what I meant to say. My brain's kind of frazzled right now. The point is, is that I can keep going on and on and on and on and trying to find what is going on with my stomach to 
basically be in denial about what's going on with it. But it won't change it if that's what's true. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyways. Point is, is that if it does come out that all these stomach problems, all these health problems that I've been having are because of my depression and anxiety, then I hope that they gave me, give me the medicine that I need and then I finally, finally start to get better. Because it's not easy. But I also want to say that I know there aren't a lot of people who watch my channel anymore. And I will be posting this on both of my channels, by the way. But I know that there's not a lot of people there because, I mean, I kind of upped and left. I was in my A for a long time. I do have plans for my channels. I do. They're great plans. I don't want to tell you about them yet because I want to make a whole separate video for it. But they're, I think they're really good. And I think a lot of people are going to be really happy with them. I just need some more time. I need time to get better. I need time to find the joy and passion in making videos again. Because it went away for a while, even from streaming. But I know it's going to come back. I believe it will. It'll come back. So. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Whoever did all the way through. Put up with my awkward pauses and my crying moments. And everything. any family members if you're watching this I want to say thank you because you guys have been dealing with this the most everything with me being patient with me putting up with my mood swings and you know trying to live with the fact that to eat, to drink, to breathe, to, to believe that I will get better, that I will be healed one day, that I can eat whatever I want again, and I don't have to worry about anything, that every day will be a new day and I will be so excited to leap out of bed and hold my cats close to me and know that it's going to be a good day. To the people who were my friends and maybe we grow apart or we just don't talk anymore. If you're watching this, I hope you can forgive me. You know a bit more of the story now. You know, maybe it wasn't my decision to stop talking to you. There's more demons up here than you can see. And then I think of you fondly and often. I think about our happy moments. And to some of you, I, I miss having you as a friend. To most of you. To 
the people watching this who still consider to be friends with me. Thank you for sticking with me. Even though we don't talk a lot. Maybe you haven't heard from me in a while. Maybe these videos or social media is the only way that you hear from me. Posts, that is, so social media posts. Thanks for sticking by me. And to the people who just watch my channel and maybe not know me personally, thank you for taking a little over an hour out of your time to listen to me today. I was going to be like, thank you for listening to my TED talk, but <laughs> it's dumb. I hope you stick around for the channel. I've got big things coming. And, um... You can watch some other videos. I mostly stream lately, but uh, I do have big things coming up. I have more games and more videos being waited to edit so that way you guys can see them. But please don't be expecting like a video a week or even a video a month, maybe not even a stream a month, because you know about maybe if you watch my previous life update videos, maybe about half what's going on. You know the important stuff. And to everyone as a whole, you guys are so special. You guys mean a lot to me. I mean, if you're still here, then, you know, obviously you care about me at least a little. And whether you guys think about it or not, or believe it or not, you guys help me every day. Some days when I just want to give up. Maybe in more ways than one. I think about memories from high school. Good ones. I think about my family. How much I love them. I think about the time I want to spend with them while they're still here. Because you just never know. Part of me will always blame myself for her death. And part of me will always hate myself for that day. But thinking about the people that are still around me, that still love me, And still care enough to listen to me, or hang out with me, or talk to me, or play games, or whatever. Even to just take a second and look at my little posts that I make about my cats on Instagram. It's pretty much all I use social media for now lately. You guys are awesome. I'm getting to the point where I'm going to start rambling, but before I go, I just, um, I want to say one more thing to the people who I knew in high school, who know me personally, or used to. It's not your fault. 
do not blame yourself. I don't want this video to be a reason for you to self-harm or self-hate. I don't want it to be a reason for you to start beating up on yourself or even spam calling and texting me wanting to apologize. It was a different time. There was nothing you could have done. And the things that happened or didn't happen, it was for the best in some ways. to that guy that I talked about before. Just want you to know. You became one of the most important and special people in my life in such a short time That even though our friendship didn't last as long as I would have liked it to, I am grateful for the time that I did get with you. The memories that I have with you. And if you are watching this, you are watching this, I think I'd be pretty surprised. I wouldn't go so far as to say you're just pretending to care about me again, but just know that I will always care about you. You always have a little piece of my heart. There will always be pages in my daily journal about you. And then I wish you happiness. But it's almost six o'clock. King has been buzzing me. And, uh, thank you for watching. I'm not going to make any promises about I'll stream soon or I'll post a new video soon. I, I will just do my best. And when I end this video, I will take a few seconds to put my whole thing of social media like I always do at the end. You can feel free to text me. Probably don't call me, because I probably won't answer. But a text will be a little less, I guess, anxiety inducing. I just feel like if people call, like start calling me right after this video, like it's gonna freak me out. Because I don't know what they're gonna say, you know? It's just gonna freak me out and I won't want to answer so just uh, just text if you're going to but um you can comment if you want I'll leave the comment section open like not blocked I think people are doing that now uh, I'm not looking for likes or anything this is just, I just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about some stuff. And, um, I'm going to run fast on the 23rd. King and I are going. It'll be his first 
time, and I will make this promise. I will be cleaning off my phone storage because I am going to be recording the absolute crap out of him. Because the way that he talks about Red Vest, he just sounds like a little kid. And he gets so giddy and excited, and oh, I'm so excited for him to experience something that I've been to so many times and just oh, I'm so ready. I'm so ready. So that will be a thing. I, I pinky swear it will be a thing. I don't know when, but it will be a thing. And I just hope that the last three months of this year, something gets better. And if you guys have been struggling with 2021 as much as 2020, I'm not going to say that I hope this video gives you hope, because it wasn't really a hope-inducing video. Inducing. Am I using that word right? Whatever. But, I love you guys so much. You guys are so important to me. And, um, I will have my phone. I'm not expecting anybody to text me or call me or anything like that, um, or comments or anything. This is not for publis publi publicity. This isn't for that. It's not for any kind of whatever. This is just for informative and educational purposes. So, um, been recording for almost an hour and a half, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it right now, and text King because he's probably freaking out because I'm not texting him back, but, um, don't be ashamed to do something that makes you happy calms you down. If eating a bunch of candy makes you feel better emotionally, I'm not going to be the one to stop you. Now I would prefer, you know, obviously people would prefer if it wasn't something so dangerous, like, you know, something that's actually an addictive problem. The day that chocolate or sugar becomes an addictive problem, I might be in trouble. But at this point, I'm okay. But, have your guilty pleasures. Everybody has them. But don't let them destroy you. If someone finds out, you know. It was really hard for me to open up to King about my guilty pleasures. The things that make me happy, the things that calm me down, my coping mechanisms. I guess that's a better way for it than like guilty pleasures. But he's so amazing, you guys. And he's been there with me through every step of this crap that I've been dealing with. And he makes sure that I have plenty of candy and ice cream and sweet tea. I will throw in one little thing because I think it's adorable and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. But like I was mentioning before, I made a new Instagram. I changed one of my old Instagram accounts to this one and I think it's much better off. Let's see if I can show you guys. But it is a specific Instagram account only for Lucifer and Chloe. And a lot of people actually like it. And a lot of people have been 
messaging me, trying to get me to, uh, like, let them sponsor me and give me free stuff for the cats. Uh, but I just, I haven't, you know, felt up to it. And I want to do that whenever I'm more involved with my channel again. But, um, here, whoop, sorry. <laughs> here it is. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, well, it's kind of hard to read because it's backwards. But it says, Chloe and Lucifer's Kitty Life. Just all of that. Um you'll see a picture of Chloe and Lucifer and you'll see a lot of pictures of me and Chloe and Lucifer and they are just the best so if you want to follow that you can uh, I post I've been trying to post daily I, I thought it was a nice small thing for me to try to get myself to do daily um, so I just post pictures and little videos of Chloe and Lucifer because they're literally my world they mean everything to me and if there's one thing, or two, besides Sean, besides King, besides King that um, has been helping me cope with everything, keeping me happy and keeping me here, it's been them. So they deserve all your love and support. But uh, yeah, they're becoming the little famous kitties on that Instagram account. I think it's adorable, honestly. They were so made for the camera. <laughs> but, um, yes. I love you guys. I've dragged this on long enough, and I'm gonna go ahead and end the video. But, um, I hope you stick around. You can watch some previous videos on the channel, or streams, or whatever. Uh, follow on my social media. I'm trying to keep updating it, but, you know, but yeah, and, uh, I will see you in the next video or stream or whenever I see you next time, and, uh, once RuneFest happens, I told Durza that video was number one priority because I'm so excited for it, honestly, like, I think it's gonna be the highlight of the year for both of us. 